Well, E3 is upon us. It actually starts next week, but let's be honest. There are tons and tons and tons of game announcements and reveals and trailers and such that are slowly trickling out. And today is almost like E3 went live if you're a PlayStation VR fan like I am because we got seven brand new games that dropped today over the course of the day via the PlayStation blog. I've gone through all the blog contents, I've looked at all the videos, and I thought it'd be fun to kind of just scan through these together because let's face it, PSVR doesn't get the love it deserves. And if you feel the same way about my channel, you can subscribe. All right, so um, there are seven. Um, here's the official blog post. This is from the PlayStation blog. As with every video I do, uh, full links in the description box below. Uh, PSVR Spotlight returns with new updates, and um, here you can see is basically a list. And this blog evolved during the day as they unveiled more and more. I figured it would make sense to do just one video at the end instead of a bunch of smaller videos um, kind of showing things off. And uh, first and foremost up is Sniper Elite VR. Now, I love sniping games in virtual reality, and there just aren't enough. I think back to my time with Farpoint. That was really my entry point into virtual reality because I got the PlayStation AIM controller, that big white controller. Uh, and the way you held the um, gun up to your head and you were able to look through the scope as if you were looking through a real scope on a magnification, you know, like a gun magnification was fascinating to me. And here you can see a, a little snippet of it here. Now, I hope they pull this off. I, I really, really do. Um, this is definitely something I would love to see happen. But uh, essentially, um, here you have a really cool uh, shooter with uh, tons of gunfire. The problem is with all these trailers, I guess I'll point out, and we're not gonna go through the entire trailer in each one. Virtual reality is hard to demonstrate because you don't see it in a flat space. You see everything around you. So you gotta keep in mind that this is gonna be very, very uh, immersive, very environmentally immersive when you're crawling around or you're watching some of these sniper shots or you're kind of crouching behind cover, you're gonna feel that. And uh, this just looks like a fun kind of mindless shooter game. I mean, that's really what the Sniper Elite games have always been. So this is definitely something that is on my radar for sure. Um, next up, we have uh, an interesting game called The Wanderer. Um, and <laughs> I'm not really sure um, if this is a game for me personally. Um, the idea is here, it says, get immersed like you've never been immersed before in time travel. And what it's gonna let you do is basically play out puzzles from various points in time. Um, and I guess it's gonna be up to you to assume that things go normally, or maybe they don't, I'm not really sure. It seems like it's just a very basic puzzle game. Um, I wouldn't say basic, I don't wanna belittle it, but it seems like it's just a puzzle game where it's gonna put you in key moments in history, you know, the first co phone call, the first flight, the first whatever. And it's up to you to make sure that things actually go the way that they should. Um, seems interesting. This seems more like a game you would get if you were just getting into VR. Almost feels like a sampler disc to me, uh, honestly. It feels just like a little bit of everything. Um, up next, we have um, Fract. Now, Fract wants to be a first person shooter with you know lots of action. I think it's cool, but I could just say that in my experience with any first person shooter that is of the combative nature on VR, it's really hard to get an audience. I think that's what makes it very, very difficult. It's hard to keep an audience. There have been some great competitive shooters on the PlayStation VR. The problem is you're gonna be playing a match with like six of the 10 people over and over and over because there's just not a big fan base for it. Um, this looks fun though. The fact that you can you know, kind of get behind cover here. It looks like it's a giant, at least the level that they're highlighting here, like a giant complex. You're gonna be opening doors, climbing around, kind of sliding under things, climbing up ropes, ladders, elevators uh, to, to fight. Looks interesting. I just don't know. I don't know. It just seems like a lot to take in. <laughs> it really does. And I just think with a lot of these VR games, particularly ones that are very, very heavy on what they call free locomotion, where you're actively walking around and shooting and doing stuff like this, I just can't help but feel you're going to get really dizzy. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, we'll be. I'll be really curious to see what um, Frack does. Um, you know, 
they, they do say even here, it's a freely move experience. Uh, you got interactive weapons. You're going to be crouching, hiding behind things. You're going to be the hero. Um, I don't know. Could be fun. Maybe not. Next up, I think, is one that I'm actually very interested in, which is Winds, Winds and Leaves, which is a fun, more like a chill VR game. Terraform the world and bring plants to life with your own hands. Reminds me of something like Flower, where it's very mellow. Uh, it seems like the music is very tranquil. You're going to be planting things. You're going to be harvesting. You're going to be growing up the environment around you. And um, almost in the really fun way that Concrete Genie had that amazing virtual reality experience where you got to kind of paint and build up a world around you. This kind of feels like that to me. This is definitely more my pace for a virtual reality game where you're going to kind of just be taking your time and, you know, enjoying the world as it is. And it's funny that they show this off as a PlayStation VR game. Um, you could see there, <laughs> looks like there's prompts, but it's not PlayStation prompts. So maybe they lifted this footage from somewhere else. I'm not really sure. But um, yeah, this is definitely more my speed. I think out of all the games I showed between Sniper Elite and this, this is definitely something that I could find myself sinking some good time into. Uh, next up is a very interesting one. This is Bubble Bobble, uh, Puzzle Bobble, <laughs> Puzzle Bobble 3D, which is really just a total ripoff of Bubble Bobble, which is what I was trying to say. Um, and I'm not really entirely sure how this game works in a 3D space in the sense that, you know, it looks like unlike other games where you're standing at the bottom, shooting up and kind of ricocheting the bubble left and right above you. It seems like you're going to have some sort of gadget to actually manipulate the whole sphere, for lack of a better word, that, that uh, object um, around to shoot at different parts of the map. Uh, there's like a wheel that you turn with your hand to get off some different shots. Seems very simplistic. I'd be curious in a game like this where the challenge starts to come in. I mean, Bubble Bobble was a very basic game, but obviously when it came out, we didn't have the kind of stuff we do now. I don't I don't know how puzzle games that are this static and this kind of one-noted actually work in VR space. Tetris effect definitely comes to mind. A phenomenal experience. I beat it in an afternoon. I never played it again, so. Lastly, we have a very ambitious game, uh, Arashi, The Castles of Sin. And it says, become, you know, vengeance, basically, with your loyal wolf companion and um, arsenal, fu uh, arsenal <laughs> feudal arsenal. <laughs> there we go. Um, and it's going to take place. It's very dark. Um, it looks like you're going to be sneaking around. The frame rate does not look good on this game. And I, I know virtual reality, I already said that, virtual reality does not display well. So I, I'm not going to beat it up solely because it looks very glitchy to me. I think that's just a artifact of virtual reality. That said, this just seems like it could be a fun game. But I feel like just it doesn't display well enough that I don't think I'm going to get interested in it. And they don't really show off a whole lot. Um, they show off a lot of pretty vignettes of you standing there with a wolf. I see a lot of empty space. A lot of empty space. I understand there's going to be some stealth aspects. You're sneaking around. You're killing guards kind of like you know, a ninja would and potentially jumping from rooftop to rooftop. And while that sounds fun, we don't see any of that in this game. So... I don't know, the jury's out on that one. But I feel like PlayStation did a really good thing here as I wrap up this video. It gave us a highlight and they focused on some of the new PlayStation games that are gonna be coming out. Um, you know, they, a lot of them have release dates. A lot of them are a lot sooner than we thought. And uh, hopefully there's some of them are on discount. You know, I think this is a great incentive for them to hype up PlayStation VR and to you know do something like this this made a fun event out of it checking in seeing the tweets roll in about every hour hour and a half with a new blog with a new video i like this uh, i know this isn't the big ticket thing a lot of people want oh we want you know the next what's up for playstation 5 where's god of war where's whatever but there is a big fan base in the playstation vr universe and there are a lot of us that are still really excited for upcoming titles and i think this is a perfect way to do it and I think it was actually pretty cool. So with that, I'm going to close out this video. Leave some comments below. Let me know which one your favorite was. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. And until next time, I will see you guys on the other side.